In this video, I'm gonna teach you a simple question framework that will get your prospects to buy now. So again, for context, in my sales process, the way I teach it, there's the introduction, which is rapport and frame the call. There's the information gathering phase. And then after that, there's the transition, which is the bridge between where you ask questions at the pitch. There's the pitch, there's the committing phase, and then there's objections. Okay, so what I wanna teach you is inside of the information gathering phase, a questioning framework that really helps you get like the gold. Okay, so if you know and you're an experienced salesperson, what you know, or what you probably know, is that you really have to get to these like emotional reasons and personal reasons of why this is important to them and, and, and why they have to do this right now. If you ask, and I don't know about you guys, when I used to see this on sales scripts, I used to like cringe and it used to make me feel uncomfortable. If you see, especially in like a high level business conversation, if you just sit there on the call and like you're getting their goals and you're like, all right, John, well like, why is that important to you personally? Or yeah, John, okay, well, what would that do for you? Or like, well, John, like, but why is this important now though? With certain prospects, if you ask those questions, they'll give you the answers that you want and everything's gonna be okay, all right? But with the most sophisticated prospects and the toughest prospects, not only will that like turn them, well, not only will it not work, it's, it's gonna turn them off. Right? They're gonna be like, Ugh. like, dude, can we just talk about what, what this is? So you need a good socially aware way to ask, not to necessarily ask the same question, but to get the same information. Because it's not the questions you ask, it's the answers that you get. And the reason for that is essentially like we always cover on this channel, is there are seven beliefs the prospect needs to have to buy, pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, trust. And what we want them to do is speak out loud essentially those seven beliefs on the call before we transition to the close. Because in doing so, we're gonna create an objectionless close and the prospect just closes themselves, right? And so again, when they speak it out loud, it's leveraging the most persuasive principle that Robert Cialdini talks about in his book, Influence. It leverages the consistency bias, which essentially is the bias that you know people wanna appear consistent. So if you get these, them saying the right things prior to the call or prior to the pitch and prior to you asking them for money, they're gonna be much more likely to not give you those objections. That's why the seven beliefs exist. It leverages that consistency. So again, the problem is, is for beliefs like cost, right? Why do they have to do this now? Or part of desire is filling out, which is another belief, is figuring out why is this important to them personally? What is this gonna do for another area of their life? Those questions are kind of like, especially in a business conversation, they're kind of like, icky to ask and people don't like being asked them and not only will they not give you that great responses they're like turned off like i just said so i'm going to teach you a framework just tremendously better to ask these questions and get all the information you need from that type of stuff all the personal all the ooey gooey stuff that really makes them buy the old way to do it and the wrong way in my opinion is let's say you're going through goals and you say well hey john like i know you want to get to 15k a month how would that affect your personal life Ugh, right? So that's like, I'm not saying that can't work, but that to me, that is like mediocre salesperson. Here's the advanced way to do it. It's called a framework called permission, reason why, question. So essentially what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you an example, but I'm going to ask permission. I'm going to tell them the reason why I'm asking the question framed in their own best interest. So essentially preeminently framed, fr framed in their own best interest. That means preeminently. So I'm going to get permission. I'm going to use a preeminent reason why, and then I'm gonna ask the question. Okay, so I'll give you an example. I'll say, gotcha, John, well, um, can I ask you a personal question? And uh, I mean, the reason why I'm asking is what's really important to me is not just helping you build a real estate business, it's building you uh, wealth and, and it helping you accumulate the amount of income that you wanna have, but also one that empowers you to live whatever lifestyle that you wanna live. So when you think about that, what comes up for you? Like what's the non-monetary goals? What are the personal goals that you want your business to allow you to achieve? Okay, so let me ask you guys right now. What's better? Hey John, what would that do for you personally? Or the thing I just did demonstrated two seconds ago. Obviously the second one. And I can tell you for the reason I created that whole question framework and, and that exact word for word thing I've used a bajillion times. The reason I created that is because I couldn't use, well, John, what it's gonna do for you personally. I felt weird. I felt like a salesperson putting them through a sales process. This makes them feel like I actually care because I do, okay? So let's break down how that worked. I said, John, can I ask you a personal question? Permission increases compliance. And when you say, can I ask you a personal question? Personal presupposes 
you're gonna get a personal response, also increases compliance. So that's a presupposition. So we had the presupposition number one and permission number two already in completing, increasing compliance. Compliance is basically how thoroughly and honestly are they gonna answer my question, right? Because again, it's not about the questions we ask, it's about the answers that we get because that establishes the seven beliefs which leverages consistency which gets them to buy objectionlessly. Hey guys, we'll get back to the content in a second but I have a quick favor to ask. We don't run any ads or really do a lot of promotions on this channel at all but the one thing that would really help us out if you're getting value from this is if you could share it on your socials. So specifically sharing it on your Instagram story through a screenshot or just pressing share and really sharing it on any platform. The main way we plan to grow this isn't through ads, it's through word of mouth. So if you're you're getting value that's the one thing you could do make sure you tag me on instagram at cole thomas gordon and with that said back to the content so permission and then i do the reason why so i'll say okay great and the reason why i'm asking is what's really important to me is not just helping you build a business that's building you wealth but also one that's empowering you to live whatever lifestyle that you want to live i told them the reason why i'm asking the question and i also framed it in their own benefits so a couple things there when you ask like you probably read the cialdini study the copiers right it's like when people ditch a line the word because was the reason why people were allowed to ditch a line. It didn't really matter what the reason was. So we got to give them a reason why they're asking the question. It's going to increase compliance. The other thing is too, is I frame it in their own best interest of why I'm asking it is going to help them also increases compliance. And then I ask the question. So you see how that worked? There is four persuasion triggers there. The presupposition, the uh, permission, the reason why, and the... Uh, the uh, framed in their own best interest reason why. All of those persuasion triggers there increase compliance. And now, what type of answer do you think I'm gonna get to that question? Tremendously better. And just to top it off, what you can do is, it, you know, if you get something that seems a little bit still surface level, you can say, hmm, well, uh, I mean, I, I, I guess that makes sense. Um, is, there, is, is there any other reason that that's important to you though? And just something like that, and you might not say important to you though, but um, you could say, is there any other you know, non-monetary goals that are, are, are tied to you being able to do this? And just that little any other reason really, really helps. I call that the any other reason question. So essentially there's two reasons. Everybody has two reasons for doing something. They have the reason that sounds good and then the real reason, okay? So essentially, like there's the reason that they would say if they're public speaking, and then there's the reason they would tell you, you know, if you had five beers with them and, you know, they're just being honest with you at the bar. Okay. So that any other reason sometimes will elicit the real reason if you didn't get the real reason on the first question, which if you use this framework, a lot of times you do get the real reason. So just to give you an example, one time I was uh, selling, you know, this guy on starting a business and, you know, I asked him this question and why this was important to him. And I did all this framing I'm talking about. And, you know, he gave me some surface level stuff. I could tell it was just surface level stuff. And then I asked them, hmm, I mean, I was like, I'm, I guess that makes sense. I mean, is there any other reason this is important to you now, though? And he was like, well, you know, like, I divorced my wife a couple of years ago. And during that time, I was trying to start this business and that business, and, and none of it worked. And the thing that really twisted the knife the most for me was that she never believed in me. And I want to prove that bitch wrong. And so I thought that was a really good one. I'll remember that. Let me give you another example here. So um, again, like I did the one, for, so you know, one of the good questions that you want the answer to, but it's a bad question is what would that do for you personally, right? So I gave you a better framing for that. Let me give you another framework that also works for the question, why is this important now though? Okay, so again, if I ask, okay, John, well, why is this important now? Why is this important? You know, John's like, come on, you know, like especially if they're sophisticated, they get it. So what's the socially aware, to go, socially aware way to go about it? It's a framework called permission context question. So permission's exactly the same as what we did before, but instead of reason why, what I'm gonna do is context. It's gonna be easier for me to give you the example and explain it. So what we have to do here is let's say it's a business opportunity and this dude's working full time, working a nine to five, and he wants to leave and start an Amazon business, okay? So I'll say, I, I, gotta, I gotta tee this question up the right way. So I'll say, okay, great. Well, well, John, um, what do you what do you do for work full time right now? Oh, okay, you know, you're you're a truck driver. Cool. Do you like it? And he's, you know, he likes it or doesn't like it. It literally doesn't matter what he says. You're gonna position it the same way either way. Let's say they don't like it. You're gonna say, oh, okay, well, well, what don't you like about it? Or what's the worst part about that? Okay. Then you're gonna say, so you a little bit of probing. And okay, cool, John. Well, um, and, and how long you been doing that for? 
oh, I've been doing it for 10 years. Okay, once you get, I don't like it, I've been doing it for 10 years, then what you're gonna say is, wow, uh, can I ask you a personal question? And, you know, look, like, I mean, 10 years. Like, after all of that time, um, why all of a sudden did you decide to transition out of this and do something else right now, though? Like, what shifted for you? What happened? So again, you see a couple things I'm doing there. Number one, tonality. We talked about this in other videos. I'm not like, can I ask a personal question? Well, after all that time, what shifted for you? What happened? Why now? Like, I'm not asking like, I'm, I'm like trying to find my words and stumbling a little bit. It makes it tremendously more authentic and softened and you get better responses. So again, can I ask your personal question, permission, and the personal presupposition? Then what I do is I paint context, okay? This is very key. I say, well, dude, 10 years. You know, you've been doing this for 10 years. I mean, after all of that time, like, I mean, this has been a real career for you. Like, I guess like what I'm curious about is why all of a sudden did something shift for you to where you wanna do something else now though? So what I did is I took his behavior and I painted it in a format which could be perceived as abnormal. And then I asked him to justify that behavior to me. Think about it this way. He's been doing this for 10 years, one thing for 10 years, and then now all of a sudden, very, very recently, he wants to do something else. So you see how like that is kind of abnormal. Like that is a little bit different. I, I you know, I explain that essentially with my, with, my, with my words, and then I ask him to justify the change of behavior to me. Now, again, one of the biggest levers of persuasion with Robert Chanini talks about is the consistency bias, the appearance, the appearance to appear consistent. So when I ask him to justify it to me, he like he wants to appear consistent and like his things make sense because as you could see, he's not consistent. Does that make sense? So when I ask him to justify that to me, I'm gonna get a tremendously higher amount of compliance. Now, the other thing I did with how I asked that question is I said, what shifted for you? What happened? I didn't say, well, why is this all the, you know, a sudden important to you? Even if I do say that, I'll say, why all of a sudden is this important to you? Like, what, what, what shifted for you? What happened? The reason I want to know what, I don't want to know the reason, I want to know what happened, okay? One of the things uh, Tony Robbins always says, people who make change, it's because of a moment of moment and decision, a moment of decision. It's this time where they draw the line in the sand, they say enough is enough and they have to take action and like things are never going to be the same again. And what I have found is if you can find the moment of decision on a sales call, if they can bring that up, oh my God, it's like the most, you're almost going to close every single time. So give me, I'll give you a few examples. I was selling a guy one time and I did this and he said, well, like three weeks ago, a shooter came into the school and while my wife was okay, she was teaching at the time and I never want to put her in a position like that again. So I made the commitment to be able to retire my wife three weeks ago. So you see how like, that's a moment. Another one, this is a very common one in the weight loss industry is, uh, you know, well, my, my, my daughter hopped on my lap and said, mommy, you feel squishy. So again, you see how that's a moment of decision. Now, the reason why this is so important is because when they have to explain to you what happened, the moment of decision, right? Where all of those emotions came to the surface, they drew the line and they said, this, they said enough is enough. When they got to explain that to you, by the nature of explaining it to you, they have to relive all or resurface and, and re-experience all of the emotions associated with that experience, which guess what? are the emotions of change. So do you see how these little tiny things here, like you could tell, like I've taken so many thousands of sales calls cause like all this stuff I just kinda, some of it I've gotten from coaches and trainers and stuff like that, but a lot of this stuff I've just kinda like nuancedly made up. And so you could see how I could ask, well why is this important now, John? Or I could tee the question up, paint a lot of context, create an admirality and behavior, then do permission, paint the context, ask them to justify it to me and tack on that little phrase of what happened to get the moment of decision. It's pretty cool, right? So hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. Um, you could do that framework with anything. So recap, permission, reason why question, permission, context question, but always think about really ways where you can get them to justify their behavior to you, opposed to you probing. Okay, another common example, if you say, well, what's, what's your income goal? How much money you wanna make? They say 10K a month. Instead of saying, oh, John, well, what would that do for you? What you want to say is, oh, well, it seems like you've like settled on that before. I guess, you know, if I can ask, why that number? So you see how when I say, well, John, what would that do for you? I'm probing. When I say, wow, well, it seems like you've kind of settled on the number before. If I can ask, why that number? 
See how in one example I'm justifying, I'm getting them to justify their behavior to me in the other example, I'm probing. Try to get them to justify their behavior to you because you're leveraging the consistency bias, which is the highest driver of human behavior, you know, says Cialdini, which is pretty much the number one researcher of persuasion in the world. So hopefully you enjoyed this, guys. If you want the full sales process, there's a link above for the video. See ya.